While exploring the area outside the covert lab in Roseway, you may run into a woman named Lillian. Hey there, you the fella Cass called about? Cass is short for Cassandra O'Malley, the outlaw slash freedom fighter we met when we explored the covert lab in its entirety. If you're interested, you can watch my video on the covert lab here. Look, you kind of caught me by surprise here. Cass didn't mention having anyone out here when I last spoke with her. I was left out here as a picket. Name's Lillian. Hope you're having a better time than us. Bad day, huh? I've had better. Lost some things in a dust-up. But I didn't get eaten like some of our crew got that going for me. I'm sorry to hear that. Were they friends of yours? Some of them were okay. You don't get too close in this work. And Dylan, well, ain't no one gonna regret his passing. Least of all his mama. I was near the Raptodon pen when they got loose. Had to set a few to rights. When I got to checking if all my parts were still attached, I realized I'd dropped my cigarette case. Why didn't you go back and get it? When I turned about, I seen two fine gun hens being snacked on by lizards. No cigarette case is worth my life, no matter how badly I need a smoke. This was a Spacer's Choice commemorative case. Some promo for founding day they did back in, uh, I forget the year. Worth decent bits to collectors. Wouldn't hurt to do her a nice turn, would it, Captain? Let's say I managed to nab it. You willing to pay to get it back? Well, you'd sure as hell have earned it, wouldn't you? Where did you lose your cigarettes? An outdoor raptodon pen yonder, past the main entrance. Well, only knows why they're breeding the damn things. All right, I'll come around again if I can get a hold of it. I'd be obliged. Just don't lose any parts trying. To reach the raptodon pen and find Lillian's cigarette case, we can follow the road northeast of her position and then cut to the right towards the main entrance of the antibiotics lab. Then head south off the beaten path. You'll come to the edge of a cliff and be able to look down on the raptodon pen, which, at least in my case, gave me a strategic advantage. Looking to get a bit closer, I backtracked a bit and then made my way down the side of the cliff. The path is lined with mines, and we know full well that if we set them off, the raptodons will charge and will lose the element of surprise. So creeping slowly across the road, we can use two magpicks to enter into a small storage building. Here we find a couple of corpses, a workbench, three magpicks, a couple of bins that we can loot, and some energy cells in the southern corner. There's also a tipped over locker containing more ammo, 25 bit cartridges, and an impact hammer. Once the room is completely looted, we can access a terminal that belongs to El Han, a name that we recognize from another terminal inside the covert lab. The terminal has three messages on it, the first of which is written from Han to Porter, subject, the mating habits of the common raptodon. Our raptodons seem to be experiencing a problem of the intimate variety. If the law has instilled in these bloodthirsty beasts the instinct towards self-preservation, then that instinct does not seem to manifest in procreation. If anything, the internal logic of the common raptodon is to ensure the survival of its species by butchering every other living creature within sight. My other working theory is that these raptodons refuse to breed, and I do not know why. I have attempted to play music for them. No luck. Well, gee... Maybe they're not breeding because you're torturing them and performing horrific experiments on them. I don't know, just a thought. Please tell Mr. Crane I'm working as hard as I can to resolve this issue. I understand he's eager to test the genetic makeup of the Raptodon Alpha for its possible applications in improving our dental hygiene. The next message is written from Han to Dr. Crane. Please do something about Reuben. He won't stop checking in on my Raptodons. Just today, he told me that I need to improve security on my Raptodon pen on the occasion that brigands and bandits fall upon Roseway. Given the secrecy of our operation, I hardly think we're in any danger of falling prey to roving outlaws. For goodness sake, Anton, we're on the ass end of Terra 2 here. Oh, Han, you idiot. If you had just taken Porter's advice, then maybe we wouldn't have Raptodons running wild and mauling people to death throughout Roseway. Finally, the last message is from Cassandra O'Malley to Han, Anton Crane, 
Porter, and 53 others, pretty much Anton's entire staff. Subject, Look upon my works, ye mighty, and despair, to whom it may concern. If you are reading this letter, you are either the odious and perfidious faction of tyrants known as the Board, or you are one of my people wasting time on patrol. If you are the former, know that the days of your iron-fisted rule over the colony of Halcyon are numbered. As the day of your reckoning approaches, I advise you to consider the words written on the pedestal of Ozymandias and reflect on the human condition. If you are the latter, get back on patrol, you dolts. Well, Cassandra must have broken into this outhouse here and used this terminal to send out that message. That would explain the corpses we found earlier. Heading back outside, we see that the cigarette case is located just to the west. But we can't just rush in and grab it. There are landmines blocking the path, and even if we got past them, we'd have to somehow deal with an entire pack of raptodons. And in a small enclosed space, I don't like those odds. I ultimately came up with a plan to use the mines to my advantage. Climbing to the top of the outpost, we can fire a single shot at one of the smaller raptodons. This causes the entire pack to rush towards our location, straight into the landmines. With half of the Raptodons dead, we can use our plasma rifle to pick off the rest. After jumping down from the outpost and looting a bypass shunt off of a container, we can travel west, grab some ammo off of another container, and then head up a ramp onto a catwalk. There's a bin that we can loot to the north, and on the opposite end, we find a terminal. On it, we find an automated security warning. Dear sir and or madam, this is an automated message generated to inform you of a security breach somewhere in the vicinity of the Roseway Laboratory and Outpost. Auntie Cleo wishes to inform you that in the event of a security breach, you are expected to destroy evidence of any ongoing experiment of questionable legitimacy. Please retrieve any available weapon and commence elimination of your cache of imported raptodons. Well, we know that didn't turn out too well. Please remember to disable electric fences before attempting to enter Raptodon pens. Auntie Cleo frowns upon the use of any weaponry made or designed by Spacer's Choice. If your body is found carrying an unauthorized weapon designed by Spacer's Choice Incorporated, you may be fined for violating your non-competition agreement. There's also an option on this terminal to arm the electric fence, but since we want to be able to easily enter in and out of the Raptodon pen, I decided to leave that off. Heading into the pen, we can search behind a pile of containers to find the commemorative cigarette case. This cigarette case is metal lined and embossed with an iconic rendering of the Hope. The name Lillian is signed on the inside of the metal lid. Commissioned by Spacer's Choice for a founding day anniversary promotion, honoring the lives lost with the hope. Nothing like a good smoke to help you remember someone dying in the airless void of space, gasping for breath in their last moments. That was made for the 50th anniversary of the hope. I remember that. I just got back from school. Dad set candles on our doorstep. Must have been a pretty special day if you can remember those details, Parvati. Too bad the entire story of the hope as told by the board is a complete lie. After looting a few outlaws who met their unfortunate end here in the Raptodon pen, we can return to Lillian. Seriously, don't get yourself killed. It's a nice cigarette case, but it's still just a cigarette case. We've got a few different ways we can go about completing this quest. We'll be sure to explore all of them, but first we can say, I've got some good news, Lillian. I have the cigarette case you lost. You're shitting me. I'm not saying it wasn't a hassle to get, but here it is, safe and sound. You ain't so bad. Here's something for the trouble. For completing the quest this way, we're rewarded with 500 bit cartridges and the Anarchist's Cookbook, a powerful grenade launcher-esque weapon that I'll tell you more about in just a few moments. Instead of presenting the cigarette case to Lillian, we can intimidate her and say, If I could get this when you couldn't, I bet you couldn't take it from me. It's been a real long day. You want to do this? It's a shitty cigarette case. I wasn't going to fight no raptodons over it, and I sure as fuck ain't fighting you. 
Alternatively, we can lie to Lillian and say, I don't think there's any way to get your cigarettes out. I'm leaving them there. I didn't think so either. Maybe when the Raptodons clear out, I'll check back. If we choose this option, then we don't get any bits from Lillian, but we do get to keep the cigarette case. I read online that if you have Vicar Max in your party when you find the cigarette case, he'll comment that you can keep it for selling. However, I have no idea where to sell the cigarette case or who to sell it to. I tried vending machines, various merchants, Gladys aboard the Groundbreaker, but the game wasn't giving me the option to sell it. I think more than likely we'll meet a unique merchant somewhere down the road who will be in the market for commemorative items and will be able to sell it to him or her at the time. I don't, however, know how much the cigarette case is worth, because the game doesn't tell us that either. If you happen to have the answers to any of these questions, please feel free to comment. For now, I'm going to go ahead and say that the best ending to this quest is to return the cigarette case to Lillian and get rewarded with 500 bit cartridges and the Anarchist's cookbook, which looks similar to a standard grenade launcher and deals 244 DPS. The Anarchist's cookbook fires smaller plasma-infused shells than most other launchers we find in the game, making it a great weapon for getting yourself out of situations in which the odds aren't exactly in your favor. It does have a fairly large maximum blast radius, but this can be problematic when you're traveling with a companion. I can't tell you how many times Parvati got up close and personal to an enemy, forcing me to wait before firing because I didn't want to accidentally hit her. That's why, as a general rule, I typically don't use explosive weapons like this. They can be effective in some unique situations, but most of the time, I prefer faster, more agile firearms. But folks, I would love to know what you think. What are your thoughts on the Anarchist's cookbook? Personally, I don't think it's really anything special, but maybe you have a different opinion. Were you able to find out where to sell the cigarette case? And if so, how much were you able to sell it for? Let me know in the comments below. I post new videos on the Outer Worlds every Wednesday and Sunday, ladies and gentlemen. So be sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification icon so that you can be alerted when I post new content. If you're so inclined, leave a like on this video too. I'd really appreciate it. I'll be back in just a few days with a brand new video on the Outer Worlds, but that's all I've got for now. Thank you again so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.